price as you can see at 0 volt it is showing 0 on the screen now I increase the voltage here see at 3 volt it shows 3 here at see 1 volt it shows 1 here see we have done the calibration very nicely see that now at 1.92 it shows 2 or 1 because it is something uh, on the border now I go up 2.6 it is now 2 3 at 4 volt it shows 4 now see that we had said uh, in our programming that whenever the voltage goes above 5 volt then an LED will turn on and whenever it will go above 12 volt then the second LED will turn on as well now we reach the 5 volt now it is 5 see here it is also 5 see that now when we go above 5 see the LED turns on and now it is 6 volt here it is also 6 volt there now it is 7 here it is also 7 volt here you can see that now I make it like it is 9.9 .9 nearly on the border of 9 and 10 so I make it 10 see now it is 10 volt here it is 10 volt here as well and LED, second LED is not on because it is programmed that whenever it will go above 12 volt then it will turn on now see now I go above 12 volt see that still it is not on because it must be greater than 12 on at 13 it will turn on see it is on and here it is 15 that is the maximum this power supply can go it is 15 here it is 15 as well this module can go up to 25 volts so you can see that both the LEDs are on we are at 15 volt here to 15 now we go back in the opposite see it is at 13 it is at 12 volt see 14 15 now whenever it is greater than 12 the LED is on second LED now as soon as it will go below 13 the LED will turn off see the one LED is off now now I go below 9 8 now it is 7 for 7 6 for 6 now below 5 that greater than 5 that is 6 it is on now whenever we will go below 6 it will be off like this see and it is 3 there it is 3 here so guys this is how it is going to work hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video i am going to show you how you can make a dc voltmeter using a voltage sensor for arduino easily available in the market maximum voltage value is like 25 volts dc and then we will display the output on a 7 segment and then we will also trigger two LEDs one whenever the voltage reaches at 5 volt an LED will turn out turn on then whenever the voltage reaches 12 volt then another LED will turn on so let's get started so guys this is our voltage sensor easily available in the market as you can see it says VCC 25 volt that is the maximum voltage it can measure DC only and then guys let me show you how uh, what is the pin labeling it is also labeled on the board as well very neat and tidy uh, but I am again going to label it for you. So if you hold it like this, the leftmost pin is the ground, center one is the 5 volt and left one is the signal pin. These you have to give to the sensor. These are the values for the sensor. Now on the left side here, uh, this is your DC supply pin. You can see that here you will connect the voltage whose value is to be measured. And then this is the DC ground. Like whichever the voltage value you are going to measure must have two wires. So ground will go here and voltage will go here like this. Then guys, uh, let's continue. This is our PIC16 FA77A microcontroller having 40 pins. It's a DIB version. Then guys, this is the sensor again. Again, the leftmost ground, the 5 volt and the signal out pin on the left. The signal out is the ADC pin. So you will need an ADC pin of the PIC to deal with it. And then VCC at this side, at the terminal block, it is labeled on the board as well. Here you will connect the voltage uh, value whose voltage is to be measured. And the left is the ground. Then guys, you will connect the ground pin that is the 3 pin side directly to the ground, 5 volt directly to the 5 volt. Remember that, that these two voltages and ground must come from the peg. You will not short them with this. The voltage is to be made as something else. And then the signal pin, you will connect it to any available ADC pin of your peg. I am going to use the pin number A0 like this. Then guys, this is our 4 digit 7 segment, day, uh, seven segment uh, uh, display. I am using an anode type. You can also use a cathode type. There is just a difference in the coding. Wiring is the same. So for the node type, uh, if you hold it like this, then you have total of 12 pins at the back, 6 on the top, 6 at the bottom. Now 
uh, the leftmost pin at the top back side is a D1, then you have segment A, segment F, seg D2, D3, then segment B. Then at the bottom left at the back you have segment E, D, dot, C, G and D4. Now guys, uh, these digits, this is the digit 1, 2, 3 and 4. So digit 1 pin correspond to this digit. In the case of an anode, whenever a 1 is sent from the microcontroller to the digit 1 pin, this digit gets enabled. Similarly, when 1 sent to D2 pin, then this digit gets enabled and so on until the 4th digit. Now guys, to connect with the pick, for the 7 segments, you are going to need 8 220 ohm resistors like this. And then guys, let me show you how to connect it with the pick. As you can see, there are total of 12 pins, but we only need 8 resistors because only 7 segment pins will get to the resistor. Rest of the 4 pins, that is the digit pin, digit 1, 2, 3 and 4, uh, you do not need a resistor for them. You will directly connect to the microcontroller. Now guys, for the digit 1 pin, or oh sorry, A pin, you connect it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, you can send it to any valuable port, but the port must have 8 digits at least. I am going to use the port B and I will send it to the pin number B0 of the port B like this. Then guys, for the B pin, connect it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B1 like this. Then guys, for the C pin, connect it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B2 like this. You can see that 0 is for A, 1 is for B, 2 is for C, then 3 must be for D. For the D pin, connect it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then you send it to the pin number B3 of your uh, PIC 16 fa 7 a like this. Then guys, for the E pin, connect it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor. Then from the other end of this 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B4 like this. Now guys, for the F pin connected to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor, then from the other end of this 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B5 of the pick like this. Now guys, for the pin number G connected to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this, then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B6 like this. Now guys, for the dot pin, again do the same, connect it to the resistors one end, then from the other end of the resistor, connect it to the pin number B7. Now guys, you may use the port D as well, it also has 8 pins, port C as well, it also has 8 pins. To connect a seventh segment but remember that this sequence that 0 is for a 1 is for b 2 is for c 3 is for d must remain the same there might be b c d whichever port you're using but you have to follow this sequence 0 for a 1 for b 2 for c because if you don't follow this then you will not be able to use a seven segment editor tool of the micro c for pick software the rest will be fine then you have to manually send the command now guys our seven segment is connected now let's get to the digit pin for the digit one pin i will connect it to the D, D0 pin of the pick, you can use any available digital input output pin for this. So, I will use a D0 because it's available. Now, for the digit 2, I will connect it to the pin number D1, that is pin number 20 of the pick. For the digit 3, I will connect it to the pin number 21 of the pick, that is D2. For digit 4, I will connect it to the pin number 22 of the pick, that is pin number D3 of the pick, like this. Now, guys, apart from these, I will also use the two LEDs I told you earlier. One LED will will turn on whenever the voltage goes above 5 volt and the other LED will turn on whenever the voltage goes above 12 volt and then when voltage goes down they will again turn off. Now guys let me show you how to connect these LEDs. To connect these LEDs you will see that each LED has two pins and one is longer one is shorter. The longer pin is the power the shorter pin is the ground. Now to connect the longer pin with the pick you will need a 220 ohm resistor. So you connect the leftmost LED power pin to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to any valuable digital input output pin which you want to use. I will use the pin number C0, so the left LED will be for the 5 volt. Whenever the voltage goes above 5 volt, the LED at C0 will turn on. Now guys, for the other LED, connect it longer pin, that is the power pin to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, I will send it to the pin number C1 like this. Now this LED will be for the 12 volt. Whenever the voltage goes above 12 volt, this will also turn on. So, now for the ground pins, you common them and you send them to the common ground of the pick. So, guys, in this way, our connections are completed for the LEDs, for the sensor and for the 7 segment. Now, we can move on to our uh, hardware. So, let me introduce you to the hardware before we get to the programming. So, guys, this is the hardware here. This is our sensor. These are the LEDs. Only two of these will be used. And then, guys, uh, this is our 7 segment anode I am going to use here. And this at the back is the PIC 16 fa 7 a microcontroller. And this is the voltage source I am going to use, DC power supply. 
and then guys at the back you can see the pic 16 f double seven a so guys uh, let's uh, get to the micro c4 pic programming first of all we will need to read the values from the sensor and display it on the screen then we will check calibrated with the power source and then we will move on to the leds so first of all this is our micro c4 pic version 7.2.0 I suggest you always use the latest one, latest is 7.5.0 and if even the latest is available at whenever you watch this video, just use that, latest is always better. So go to file, new, click on new project, click this window pops up, new project wizard, click on next, write the name of your project, whatever the name of the project you want to write, I write DC volt meter tutorial learning microcontrollers like this now guys uh, select the destination where you want to store the hex files and other files and the device you are going to use we are going to use a pic 16 f 7 a and i have a 20 megahertz crystal oscillator attached to it click on next and finish now guys before you do anything else first of all you have to save your work for that click on the screen and press ctrl s now click on save now guys the next thing is first of all we need to initialize the seven segment pins for that write down trace b equals to zero cross zero 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 like in case of an arduino you write pin mode output in case of a pick it's like a register trace and zero cross zero zero means the whole port send a uh, uh, you can say uh, eight zeros to all the pins of the port b like this so in this way the complete port has been declared as output zero means output one means eight port now the initial state of the LEDs, initially all the LEDs must be off, so port B equals to 0 cross FF. Now why FF? Why I am sending 1 to all the pins? Because I am using a node. So in case of a node, 1 means off. And in case of a cathode, they must be 0. In case of an anode, it's opposite. So in case of an anode, your LA segments must be at 1, so they are off. Now give some initialization delay. 20 will do fine. This is not important initialization delay, but I suggest you give it in the one time. Loop. Now guys, for the digit pins, we have port D. So I write trace D equals to 0 cross 0, 0. Whole port D has been turned 0 because in case of an uh, anode, uh, sorry, because uh, uh, we have uh, signal pins, uh, so the output, it's like a tris is like a pin mode command in Arduino. It's like pin mode zero means output. So for the digit pins as well, we will need the port to be output because I don't have anything else attached on the port D. So I will declare all the pins as output. If you have some buttons, then you will declare them one by one. Now guys, for the uh, initial state, write down port D equals to uh, use a binary 0 B 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now this technique like this, uh, I... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are total of 8 pins at the port D. This is the pin number D0 starting from the right. This is D1, D2, D3 up to D7. We have our 4 digits connected at D0, D1, D2 and D3. Now guys in case of an anode, 0 means it's off. 0 means disabled in case of anode. So this is correct. So initially all the pins, digit pins must be disabled. So nothing should be displayed on the screen. We will enable them one by one whenever we want to display a digit. Now give some initialization delay again. Like this. Now this is the initialization delay we gave here. Now the next thing is that we have our seven segment initialized. Now we want to initialize the digits we are going to display on the screen. For that, take an array, integer, display, uh, total of the counting digits that are in the number are 10, 0 to 9, 0 to 9 including the 0, there are total 10 digits. So an array of 10 will be enough. Now we display the, use the 7 segment editor tool to make the digits that should be displayed on the screen. Now that's why I told you, you should follow the scheme that 0 is A, 1 is B, C, C is D, etc. So you can use this tool as well. Now this is 7 segment tool. As you can see on it, uh, you can see there is common cathode, common anode value in the decimal form. So I make uh, something here, it will show the value against it. So let me make a 1 here. Remove the dot. Now see for the 1 in the common anode, it shows 207. Now place it here. Now this is 1. So display 1 means it will display a 1. So there should be a 0 before 1. So we also make a 0. Make a 0. For the 0, it shows 
192 in the anode so display 0 means a port b equals to display 0 it will mean that display the value 0 on the 7 segment so display 1 this is 1 means display 1 similarly make a 2 1 by 1 all the digits up to 9 now we make a 2 here like this for the 2 we have a node value 164 like this now make a 3 So for the 3 we have a node value 176, now make a 4, zoom in, for the 4 we have a node value 153, now make a 5, for the 5 we have 146 value, now make a 6. For the 6, we have 130 anode value. Now make a 7. For 7, we have 216 anode value. Now make a 8. For 8, all the LEDs will be on like this. And for the 8, we have 128 anode value. Now make a 9. For the 9, we have 144 anode value like this. Now in this way we got 10 digits from 0 to 9 and an array of 10. So display 0 means display 0, display 1, 2, 3, 4 corresponding digit. Now the next thing is guys, uh, we have our digits initialized. Now we have ADC pin. Our sensor set ADC value. So we initialize the ADC modules right on ADC INIT command. But in the newer versions of micro C, this will not work like this. You have to select the library from the right. Go to the right, micro library. Also check mark this library now. Now this will work. Okay, give some initialization delay. This command will initialize all the ADC pin of the pick. Also we need only one, but we had initialized the complete port because we have nothing on other pins. So there is no issue. Now guys, the next thing is we have the ADC pins as well. Now we have two LED pins. We have tris C dot F0 equals to zero. That at port C pin number 0 is an output pin. So 0 means it's an output. Now the initially the LED must be off. So port C dot F0 equals to 0 like this. Give some initialization delay. 20 will do fine. Like this. Now copy this for the other LED as well at C1. Now this is for the C1. Just make it 1 like this. So our two LEDs are initialized. Our sensor's ADC pin is initialized. Our server segment is initialized. Now we can move on to the forever loop. So write down here while 1, start writing here, ending here. Now first of all we will need to read the value from the sensor, for that we will need another integer, so write down integer uh, voltage like this. Now uh, we will write voltage, initially this value must be 0, so write down voltage equals to 0 in the one time loop, so it becomes 0 whenever the code runs. Now voltage equals to ADC underscore read 0. Why 0? This is the syntax. This is the variable which will store the value. And this is the channel through which the value is coming. We have used the pin number 2 of the pick that is A and 0. So I am using 0. If you are using the pin number of A1, then write it 1. If you are using A and 2, just make it 2 like this. A and 3, just make it 3. So for A and 0, the channel must be 0. Now give some initialization delay. I think 10 will do fine like this. Now guys the next thing is we have our ADC pins initialized and now we need to display whatever the raw value is here. This is not right now the voltage but whatever the value sensor is giving on the 7 segment. For that first of all we need to enable the digit on which the value is to be displayed here. Now digit 1, 2, 3, 4 we have 4 digits. Now the 4th digit that is at pin number D3 is our unit digit. So we make it 1 like this. Now it's 1, but we should write here, port B is the 7 segment port, write down display, whatever the integer variable is, display. Now what we have to write, we have to voltage here, voltage percentage of 10. Now guys, let me make you understand what I just did here. I go to the presentation. Now guys, take a look here. 
यू हैव डी फोर डी थ्री डी टू डी वन डी फोर इज अट डिजिट दिस इज अंथ डिजिट दिस इज अंड्रेड डिजिट एंड दिस इज अउजेंड डिजिट सो नाउ यू कैन सी दैट हेयर द पॉइंट इज डी फोर इज बेसिकली गोइंग टू बी लाइक जीरो टू नाइन मैक्सिमम वैल्यू अ सिंगल डिजिट कैन होल्ड इज जीरो टू नाइन बट वी आर हैविंग अ टेंथ डिजिट एज वेल लाइक इट्स वैल्यू फ्रॉम जीरो टू ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड द रॉ वैल्यू कैन बी द एडीसी वैल्यू ऑफ द पिक इज लाइक जीरो टू वन जीरो टू थ्री इज टू पावर टेन सो इट विल गो टू टेल डी टू फॉर द रॉ वैल्यू वंस वी कैलिब्रेटेड इट विल ओनली गो टू डी थ्री एंड डी फोर बट द पॉइंट इज वाई वी यूज द परसेंटेज सैम्बल हेयर दिस सैम्बल वाई दिस मोड सैम्बल रिमाइंडर सैम्बल वी ओनली यूज इट बिकॉज वंस दिस डिजिट गेट्स फ्रॉम जीरो टू नाइन then the control has to be transferred to the 10th digit for that purpose we will take a remainder this percentage sign is also called remainder sign a remainder will be taken and the value will be trans control will be transferred to the next digit and when the 10th digit reaches 99 both get 99 then the control has to transfer to the 100 digit for that again the remainder has to be taken that's why we use the remainder symbol only to transfer the control to the next digit so that's simple as that now guys what we do here is that we got our unit digit it's written now what we do we give some delay here this delay is very important it will define the speed of triggering because we are using multiplexing technique so i give some 10 millisecond of delay you can play with the code we will adjust this delay to make it most clear on the screen now after that it will go back to the initial state initial state is this the digits will again turn off now the unit digit has been displayed at d4 and then it has turned off now we go for the 10th digit for the 10th digit again do the same now turn off the unit digit turn on the 10th digit that is a d3 and divide the voltage by 10 to make it 10th digit like this now this is our 10th digit now guys again display the 10th digit and turn off the 10th digit as well now we go for the 100 digit now turn off the 10th digit and turn on the 100 digit like this make it 100 here and again turn off all the digits to make it back the initial state now we go for the 1000 digits for the 1000 digit do the same again here turn off the 100 digit turn on the 1000 digit make it 1000 like this and again turn off the whole digit now we take the value and see what happens i have simply built the code we will get the raw value from the sensor whatever the values i click on file in the packet 3 programmer tool and here this is a file we just created i click on write okay the new code is being written so let's get to the hardware so let it write the new code let me show you what happens okay it's written i will power this up from the mic this is packet 3 programmer tool okay it's on you see that we are getting 0 0 value see sensor is sending nothing why because we are not turn off the power i turn on the power supply see at 5 volt it is giving 210 value see that there is 5 volt but the raw value is 210 now i change the voltage see the value is also changing at 4.4 it's 185 i change it further see they are also changing so i increase the value it can go up to 15 volt see at 15 volt it's like 600 something so this power supply can maximum go up to 15 volt so that's why i cannot cross this so but it can go up to 25 at 25 it will be maximum that is 2 power 10 1024 so 1023 will be the value so you can see that for each voltage it has a special value so we can calibrate the sensor now we what we have to do we have to simply play with some math so we go to the 5 volt what is the value at 5 volt okay i go down so like at 1.4 1.5 78 89 90 103 so at the 5 volt what is the value we are concerned with this so we can do the calibration so see that it's now 4.8 see for each like i make it 3 here at 3 volt you will have a specialized value here see that at 3 volt it's like 120 something it is fluctuating because this is dc power supply is not a very expensive power supply it may fluctuate because see the digits are moving so you can see the value is changing as per here so they are constant linear so at 3 volt it's like 130 something so we can take an approximation that it is 
at 3 volt it is 130. Now we go to the calculator to do some simple math to convert it. Because here if there is 3 then here must be 3 as well. So let me turn on the calculator. So uh, let's do some math. Let me zoom in. So at 3 volt it's 130 something. So I write down 130 divided by 3 equals to 43.33. Now this is the factor. Now what I do here is that whatever the voltage is, whatever the voltage is equals to voltage divided by whatever the value we got factor we got here is 43.33. Forty-three point three three. Just divided by this. Now the our value will be calibrated. This is the calibration calibration equation. That's why we use the seven segment display. Now calibration is done. You can see that what I did is that I just took the factor and then I divided the raw value by forty-three point three three. Now what I do is that I re burn the code. Let me build and burn the new code. So I click on write. The new code is being written. Let's get to the hardware. Okay, let me write the new code. Okay, I see that now it's showing some proper value. See, at 3, 3 volt, it is showing 3 here. See, now I go up. Now take a look here, at 4 it is showing 4. Now I go to higher even. At 12 it is showing 12. At 15, it shows like it's 14.9 something because we had used as approximation for the calibration. You can use the proper values. You can play with the code. I will give you the micro C4 pick files. See that I go down like at 11, it's 11, 13.45 and 14. At 8, it's 8, 7, 6 because we are not using the float here. 5. Then we have 4. So this is the 5 volt. At 5 volt now we again check the raw value to calibrate it. See now it's at 5 volt but it's showing 4. Now what we do is that let me go back to the code. I again remove the calibration equation. Let me comment it like this. I again build the code. I write. So we can see whatever the value is here. We divided that factor by that factor. So I build the code. Let's see. See now it's at 5 volt. Let's see what is the raw value we get at 5 volt. Let the new code being written. Okay, it's written. Now see we are getting 210 value at 5 volt exact 5 volt. So now again we go to the calculator to do some other some better calibration because calibration was not good enough. We are not getting enough uh, good response. So 210 now this time 210 divided by 5. We get a factor of 42. So now we do what we do is that we simply go back and make the calibration factor 42 instead. Now that's how you will do the calibration of the sensor. Now this will be 42. Let's build the code. See it has fallen. If you take another value you will even get better. I will give you the files so you will play with the code as you like. I click on write. Okay the new code is being written. Let's see. See that now it's better. At 5 volt it's showing 5. I make it 6. See at 6 it shows 6. 7 it's 7. 8 it's 8. 9, 10. And at 15 it shows 15. Now we are perfect. See that. Now even we don't need this display anymore. We know that our value is perfect. Now what I do is that I will turn on the LEDs. Whenever it will go above 5 volt the LED will turn on. And whenever it goes above 12 volt the LED at C1 will turn on. So let's do that as well. So 
I go back to the micro C for pick programming. Here, what I do is that I add here if port C dot okay, not not this. If voltage is here, voltage is greater than five, then what it should do? Turn on the LED at port C dot F0. Port C dot F0 equals to 1, like this. Now, if else it's off, else port C dot F0 equals to off, 0. Now, we go for the other LED. Again, add another if condition. If port C voltage is greater than 12 volt, that is 12, then port C dot F1 becomes 1, else it's 0, like this. See, if voltage is above 5 volt, then LED at FC0 will turn on, and if it is above 12 volt, LED at C1 will turn on, else it will remain off. Now, I build this code. Let me again go back to the micro C for pick. I click on write. Okay, the new code is being written. So, guys, as you can see, now see the voltage here on the screen. See that it's at zero. I increase it. See, at 4.2, no LED turn on. It's at 3.9. Here it's 3, showing correct. See that no LED is on. Now I go above 5. See the first LED turns on because it must be greater than 5 to turn on an LED. Now when it will go above 12, the other LED will turn on as well. See, both LEDs are on. See that there it's 15 and here it's 15 as well and both the LEDs are on. Now we go back. I go back. See, below 12, one LED turns off. Turns off. Now whenever I go below 5, the other LED will turn off like this. Now again I move it. 6, 7, 8. And here it's also 7. There it's 7. I go above 11, 12, then 13. See the other LED turned on as well. See. Now I go back. Again. See that. Now guys we don't need this supply voltage anymore. Because in normal case with batteries you don't have these displays. Our calibration is you only need it once for the calibration purpose. Our calibration is done. Code is written. Now all we need we just need to plug in our new uh, supply. That's all. So guys, this is it. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment. I will share all the micro c 4 pic hex file and other files in a Google Drive link, which will be in the description of this video. So if you still have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. So thank you very much for your time and patience and have a nice day.